Inti Ghana niyo, mwishwe Ghana, Ghana. Enye chiyo, sprinters. Sprinters a haya au. Hey, Ghana. Hey, shwe, 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 Hey, where the English can't even copy you? The magic is easy, cause I'm sure they're more easy. You're in Kaza, we're seeing nice as only about Charlie. Oh, where they're brosso. Ah, Ghana, my attra, my amatra, attra, so you attra. Hey, oh no, no, no. You are still watching Prime Morning. It's time for the big interview. You just watched a video, and this video has been trending because this gentleman put up a big advice. And the surprising part is he did it within a space of one and a half years, and everybody's surprised about it. Now, everybody knows, again, that the economy is tough. So they're just wondering. The question, yes, maybe will be answered today. His name is Prophet Emmanuel J. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Prophet. Thank you. How are you today? God has been faithful. Good. I'm still stronger than the devil. And uh, you are trending. <laughs> You've been trending for the past almost a week now. Really? Yes. You're really trending. You're trending for the obvious reason. You put up a very big edifice. Uh, the shocking for the part. Lord. For the Lord. For the Lord. Mm -hmm. I like that. But the shocking part, within a space of one and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, is a record. Because in Ghana here, most pastors or most churches struggle to build a big edifice like this within mm -hmm. a space of one and a half years. Even government buildings can't put up such buildings within a space of one and a half years. Thank you. All right, I want to <clears throat> appreciate you for inviting me over. And then also our viewers, God bless you for accepting us. Uh, the question is not a normal question. <laughs> Uh, because the fact that somebody builds in two years, three years, four years, ten years, doesn't mean it's a norm. Right? God built the whole world in one day. Right. So if God is able to build the whole world in one day, and we build in one and a half years, I, I think we still have to move faster. Because God is trying to tell us that it can be done with the, short, the shortest possible time. In America, we build in three months. My house in America was built in three months. Uh, so the fact that we did it in one and a half years and no one has done it does not mean it cannot be done. Right. Let me ask you this question, and I know that's what a lot of people mm. are wondering. How did you raise the money? How did I raise the money? Yes. I've been in ministry for more than 25 years, and I'm a very good manager. Okay. Uh, so there you is did money. your savings? You used your savings I to build? I didn't save. I manage what God plays in my hand. Right. Remember, mm -hmm. the Bible says... One day a master traveled, and when he was going, he left talent to three of his servants. Now when he came back, he told them, what did you do with it? The guy who received five traded with a five and had ten. The second guy traded with a two and had four. The last guy did not trade. Whatever God placed in your hand is a seed. You must trade with it. So did you trade your money? If I say trade, I'm not talking about just investment. I'm talking about managing it well. Mm. Uh, so God placed money in our hands. It was well managed, and that's what we are seeing. I'll ask you this. Now, there are people at home who are struggling to manage their money, and they'll want to know what kind of management you use to manage the money to grow so much that you could build this edifice. That is why they should come to Prayer Palace. We will do that there. It's my responsibility. I am not just a pastor. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a father. I, I, I teach people how to live good life. So that's answer is come to prayer palace. Right. Another question that people are asking, and this is not from me, but from the people, mm. is that maybe you raise seeds. You made the people pay so much seeds, pay so much tithe, and that's what you used to build. Is this true? Uh, yeah. People contributed. I will not uh, shy away from the fact that people really contributed. And I thank God for the lives of my church members. I will not pastor any other church apart from prayer palace, the purple blood. But a church that is four years cannot raise such an amount of money and build. People also contributed. God touched the heart of people in and outside the country. I emptied my account. I sold most of my properties that God has given to me to reinvest back into the building project. So where do you live? Where do I live? Yes. God has blessed me. <laughs> <laughs> because if you sold your properties, where do you live? Do you have a place you live? I have a place you to live. you have your own house? I have a place to live. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Right. There's something people don't get. One day, there was an instruction to David that go build an altar for the Lord in the book of 
Second Samuel chapter 24, the verse 18. Now David went to a land that belongs to Aruna. And then when Aruna saw David coming, David had a, a conversation with Aruna. And Aruna said, because you are the king and you are doing for the Lord, we are both Christians. So I will not charge you anything. Go for it for free and offer unto the Lord. The verse 24 Aruna, David said to Aruna, I will not do anything or sacrifice anything to my God that will not cost me. The norm is that we should not give to the Lord what will not cost us. So I have this perception that anything I must give to the Lord, I must give him the best. Mm. Even if I don't have, I must look for it and do it for the Lord. Why should bankers, why should banks have good edifices when the house of God is under a tree? It's wrong. Because the house of God is a place of education. And I will not take my child to a place where the facility is bad. And I'll say they will teach my child good things in life. No. But you can have good teachers who are teaching under sheds, can't you? I will not do that. I will not take my child there. But you can still have bad teachers in good buildings. I will not take my child there. You will take, I will a, take, my take child a child to a, 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 a good a, school a, with good facility. Because children learn fast from what they see. All right, you are telling me that uh, the teachers are good. I accept the fact that they are good. But we don't learn from what they teach us only, but we learn from the things we see. Right, so I would definitely take my children to places where they can learn from but what they see. But the environment doesn't define that, you know, the teachers there are good. Yeah. The environment never defines that. Environment defines that. It does? Exposure. My daughter came from Canada. And because of the things she's seen in Canada, her way of appreciating things were different. I took her to an orphanage. We did an orphanage, I think two years ago, she came back from the Canada, so we took her to an orphanage home. And as soon as she got there, she started weeping. She's just six years old at that time. She started weeping, she said, Daddy, this guy, these guys are struggling. Where I come from, we don't see jungles. You see, so exposure, I never told her that it's a jungle. Mm. But because of exposure, she realized that some people are struggling here. So exposure is very important. Now let me ask you this, talking mm -hmm. about that, talking about taking your daughter to, um, you know, an orphanage, an orphanage home to support. Again, social media commenters were saying you could have used some of this money to support the less privileged and build, you know, a building that people can still come and worship, but your money, part of it, goes to the less privileged. Uh, that's a powerful question. Are you aware that people just go on social media and comment on what they see? You can't just know Emmanuel J just because you saw him build a house. There are so many things that we do. We pay people school fees, we've taken people outside the country to study, we pay people, we help the orphanage. There are so many things that we do. So if you see a man build a house, that is not all what he does. So Talking about the best thing is that you should go further, investigate, ask questions, and you have the answers. Talking about not knowing Emmanuel J. Who is Emmanuel J? Emmanuel J is Emmanuel J. Tell us about yourself. All right, Emmanuel J is a young man. I'm not too old, I'm not too young. Emmanuel J has been in the system for some time. Uh, my mother is late Naomi Kwenu. My father is Kwabina Ajay. Uh, my mother understands that God must be given the best. So from get go, my mother trained me to to give, so I've been a giver since day one. I remember the first time I saw my mother give is that she gave the only fruit she had uh, to the Lord, Pentecost Church, second day. We were struggling. At that time, she used to sell ice water, ice cake, and she said to us that we are struggling too much, so she has to change the narrative. And I asked Mama, how do we change the narrative? She said, let's carry what we have, our investment capital. To the Lord. So she carried and gave to Pentecost Church. I resisted my mom, my brother resisted my mom. And my mom said, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing for I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for you and your brother. When I'm dead and gone, you will appreciate what I've done. And we have appreciated what my dad did some many twenty about twenty nine years ago. We appreciate what she did. I grew up in second D. Uh the rich home? No, 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 no. We are far from riches. Uh, I can explain and I can define poverty to you. My mom was so poor, we were so poor to the point that we had to divide one egg among the, the four siblings. Uh, because my mom had f five children and then three died. So we, at that time, we had to divide an egg between, uh, among uh, four of us. What killed them? Hunger? 
No, 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 I don't know. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I was okay. young then. Right. And don't forget, I said, don't forget, um, I, was, I was not the oldest, my, older bro my eldest brother. Then I was, I think I was the fourth child. Okay. So I'm not too sure what killed them. I cannot say hunger, maybe something different. But what I'm, I know is that we had, were so poor to the point that we couldn't even rent a normal house. So those days, I don't know if it's still in existence. If somebody died, there's a family room that they do the final rights. So that's why we rented. So if somebody dies in the family, not our family, uh, we have to check out, they, f they do the final rights, then we come back and check in. It got to a time that mommy could not contain it again. So I have to just sleep by our, 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 our small property or our small, how do you call it? Uh, the small things that God has given to us, sleep by it, while the dead body is there, not once, not twice. That was how we started. And then at the age of nine, mommy decided to travel out and mm. then go get something and then help the family. So at nine years, I started my first business. Started selling. What oh, are you selling? Yeah, I was selling cigarettes. I was selling Tosca. You know Tosca? Tosca Doba. Five, Toto Pack. Five. Huh? Toto Pack. Or Tot is it Toto Pack? That's small. No, in I don't know. It's, it's called Tosca. Those days, okay. it's called Tosca. All right. Uh, Doba, Five Five, King Size. Yes, Toto Pack. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. We sell Alewa. Mm -hmm. I would sell uh, Key Soap. This was my first business. So at the age of nine, I knew how to make money. Wow. So nine years, 12 years. But why didn't you sell water? Why didn't you sell bread? Why this? Because mommy was selling that before she left. Okay. And she has folded up the company. So I had to go see where she used to buy the things from. So I went to the man, rural friend, second D, uh, Takrade, around the market circle. Way years ago, I don't know whether he's still there. Did you ever smoke it? No, 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 no. I've never smoked before. I've never drunk before. Uh, and I, you were letting people smoke and drink? It's business. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing business. I'm a business. It was a man. manifest. I'm a businessman. <laughs> so, so basically, that's how I started life. So mommy came back after, I think, two years, and I've raised some capital for her to also start something. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the age of nine, I had to okay. do my first bit. So from get-go, I know how to manage resources. What got you so close to God? Poverty. <laughs> I realized that mommy cannot support me. I, Daddy is not there. So my brother had left home. He also wanted to go survive somewhere. So the only hope I had was God. Mm. So I had to accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I had to hold on to God. At the age of 12, I was praying for hours, uh, depending on God for survival. What, what did you want God to do for you? He has to change the narrative. I, I don't want to follow the, uh, the path of my mother. I don't want to go through the same pain she went through. So I had to, and he did it. Within a short time, things started changing. At 17, I was passed through my first church. You are a prophet. When did you first see? At what age? 17. What did you see? I don't remember, but I saw something. Okay. <laughs> it's a long time. Mm. It's a long time, but I saw something. I'm not sure what I saw. How did you discover you were a prophet? All right. Uh, from, from nine years, I started seeing things. Nine, 12 years, but I didn't know what I was seeing. I remember one day I was there with my cousins, and all of a sudden I saw that Abacha was dead. So I said, ah, I'm seeing Abacha die on Monday. It was a Friday. And I thought I just said it. On Monday, we heard that it was gone. And anything I predict, it comes to pass. Anything I predict, it comes to pass. I will be there and I'll say, I see X, Y, Z person coming. And the person will just pop in. And then also by prophecies, people started prophesying to me. And then also by mentorship. Mm. So I realized that I saw and then also people confirmed what I was seeing mm -hmm. and then through mentorship. Yeah. So you pastored your first church at the age of 17. 17. Yeah. How did you become a pastor? As I said, I was under mentorship of my senior brother and he had a lot of churches. He has so many churches. So at 17, I was supposed to pastor one of his branches. Yeah. In Ghana? In Ghana. Okay. Second, uh, Takrade. You've lived in Ivory Coast. What took you to Ivory Coast? Uh, yeah, we had a branch in Ivory Coast and at that time, the pastor they had left U.S. So there was a need for me to move to Cote d'Ivoire to pass at the church because at that time I was the, uh, what do you call, I was the missions director. So I moved there. There were, 12, there were 15 people. Uh, within a year, we had moved from 15 to 1,000. So it was imperative for me to move down there and then pass at the church. So I had to move there and then pass at the church. How did you relate? I mean, from a whole English-speaking country to a francophone speaking country. for you. Okay. Whatever I want, I go for it. I started speaking French in six months. 
Six months, I started speaking French. How do you do it? I'm passionate. Whatever I want, I go for it. I am very, very passionate. And I don't take a no for an answer. So you got home teachers? I learned through my secretary. Okay. So when she's, she was my secretary at the same time, my interpreter. All right. So when I speak English and she interprets, I keep it. Mm. She speaks, I speak, she interprets, I keep it. So within three months, I will be correcting her when she's interpreting me. And she was shocked. Six months I was writing. You were yeah, writing French? Yeah, because I need to sign documents. I need okay. to sign checks. Mm. How long were you in Ivory Coast for? I was in Ivory Coast for, I think, three years. Why did you move? Because of the war. I, I was past one of the biggest churches in Cote d'Ivoire, in a place called Makori. And then the war broke. So there was no church. So we had to move out. That is how I moved to the U.S. Okay. So just because of the war, you should have stayed to save the people. Really? Yes. <laughs> All right, next time. <laughs> but not that time. <laughs> not that time. The next people time. were waiting for you. Uh, Your journey time. in America, yeah. how did it all begin? Yeah, yeah. So I got married uh, and my wife was in America. So I had to go spend some time with the family. So I moved to America. First, I moved to Pennsylvania. Then from Pennsylvania to Houston, Texas. That's how we started our first church in Houston, Texas. Mm. And I stayed there for some, I think, five years. Then I came back to Ghana and Why? I started prayer palace because God told me to come back. How did God tell you? Ah, God speaks in so many ways. And then sometimes somebody asks me a simple question that how do you see or how do you hear? And I told them that it's very difficult to explain. So I asked the person that how do you hear when I speak? The person said, I just hear. And I said, that is it. So that's how God spoke to you? I heard. I you mean, heard him just say, you move yeah, to Ghana. Move to Ghana. I was in Ghana. I, you know, I used to come to Ghana every two months to organize a crusade at trade fair. So our last meeting, I think 2018 or so, when I was preaching, God said to me, your season in America is over. Now stay. And that is how prayer palace started. No, it was 2017. Okay. The latter part of 2017. Mm. Uh, so that is how God said to me that I should stay. And so I, t I said it in the congregation that God says this is the last time we, will, we are meeting in a trade fair and I will announce the next meeting time. I didn't know where we're going. Mm. Uh, but then within two months, God has given us a place on the Spinders Road, that warehouse, uh, right? I just sent Herbalife. <laughs> they were there for how many years? We were there for two years. And then God gave us this beautiful edifice. God gave you, God gave you, God gave you. The question here is how did you secure the land at Spintex? That big land that you have put the huge edifice on. Because people are asking, do we still have land in Spintex? People don't have money. If you have money, you have land. There are so many lands. But we don't have money to purchase, so we go to Oyibi. How much is that land? I can't disclose it here. Okay. <laughs> <It's expensive. laughs> you know, when you have money, you have everything. You'll be amazed. How many acres is it? Uh, it's more than two acres. It's more than two acres. But uh, if you have money, you have land. Mm. Yeah. The issue is resources. Okay. So how did you identify the land? They came to tell me. I was, oh, somebody I was just the, came to tell me. I was me. in the office. You know, we had had a couple of lands and we lost it. Uh, so I'd gone to Canada. And then I prayed to God. You know, God is my everything. I don't have a mother, I don't have a father. My God is everything. So I talk to God. And you'd be amazed the way I talk to God. I don't talk to God the way people talk to God. Mm. I talk to him like a friend. Okay. I talk to him like a brother. Teach us. It's, it's going to be a long journey. But then I talk to him like though I'm talking to Rosalind. I say, God, I've come again. You know, I've tried everything possible. So it's not that you go on your knees and do have no, I no, 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 okay. no. Okay. It's, it's another way of praying. But I, I talk to God. I see I'm having a conversation with him. So I was in Canada and I said to him that, God, you know, I've tried my best. I had the first land. We lost it. Second, we lost it. So please get us a land. And I heard him say, I'll provide. So in the flight coming back, God said to me, get a seat and go so into the life of a man of God. Okay. So as soon as I arrived, myself and my, one of my, our pastor, Pastor Uzbempa, I signed a check and I said, drive me to the How pastor. much? I can't disclose. Why? Uh, because it's between me and God. Okay. All right. But was it huge? Uh, it, was, uh, it was good. Between 10,000, 50,000? <laughs> I will not tell you. Okay. <laughs> so I but went can to you buy a car? I can't tell. All right. Do you know you can buy a car with 5,000 Ghana? Okay. You can so, buy a car with 2,000 so, so, yeah. So, I asked the question, can you buy, can, can buy a car? It's going buy a car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I went to him and I dropped the seed. I didn't tell him. He asked me, why are you sowing this seed? And I just said, pray for him. Pray for me. Which man of God is this? Bishop Brookman. Okay. <clears throat> uh, he's at Kwabinya. So, I knelt down. And when he was praying, he said, may God give you lands. 
and I screamed, Amen. And he said, why? I said, nothing. And I left three days. Somebody came to me and said, there's a land on the Spindus Road. We went and then God gave it to us. And that's how it all started yeah. for you. Now, being a pastor, I know it's tough. Tell us some of your challenging, most challenging moments. Have you ever, have you ever said to yourself, you shouldn't have gone on this road? Oh, no, I'm not sure. I enjoy being a pastor. You know, the best thing to do is to be a pastor. But what has broken you so much? Have you cried sometimes? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sometimes we, we're preaching uh, with a microphone on our right hand, and then with the, we have the, the face tower on the left crying. It's, it's normal. Why? Uh, because we are dealing with human beings. You know, sometimes you, you have the shock of your life. The same people you raise, you help. They will turn their back at you. It's Has it happened to you? Oh, con countless times. What's the one that you remember the most? I don't remember any, but then I don't keep password. I don't keep negativities, but I keep my testimony. Say, count your blessings, name them. I but count what has been your most challenging moment as a pastor? Most challenging moment as a pastor during COVID, when I realized that uh, people are suffering. When I realized that uh, uh, people are crying to God for help, I had to virtually feed about 500 people every month during COVID, and I felt their pain. A pastor called me from Koforidia, not Suyani, sorry, and he said to me that, man of God, I don't know you, and if you don't come through for me today, uh, I might lose my children and lose my wife. We've not been eating for the past But that's not days. a challenge for you. It's a challenge for me. Why is it a challenge for you? It's a challenge for me because God has been faithful to me, and then people are struggling, and there's nobody to help them. And I'm the only one to help everybody. Yeah, that's, 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 you are there to help them. So that I, shouldn't I, be a challenge. I, that should a challenge. be can, a plus for you. I can do it all. You know, feeding 500 people every month during COVID for eight months. It's yeah, I'm say if you can't do it, he'll give it to you. That cross is yours to bear. Yes, it's a cross. You said cross. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, 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 no, but we're feeding I, them. I, I didn't say it was not possible. It's a challenge. It's a huge burden. But I carried it. I didn't say I didn't. I carried them for a whole eight months. Are you aware that those on my pay uh, uh, row, none of them went home without salary? I paid all of them 100% till COVID was over. Have you ever pastored uh, or have you ever raised some people so close to you and they've left you so broken? Oh, yes. Many, many. And it's, it's normal. Have you forgiven them? I forgave them before they left. <laughs> you understand? Because it's part of human. It, 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 we, are, we are in a human institution where people will offend you, people will bless you. People have offended me. I've also offended many. It's, it's normal. When you go on the internet and you see anything negative written about you and you realize this is somebody who was close to me and wrote it against me, uh, what do you say about the person? I pray oh. for them. I pray that God will open their eyes. And you forgive them as well? Because these things I are on the internet and offended. might stay on there forever. I am not offended. But it can tarnish your image. Image. I don't have an image. The, the mistake we do is that we think we have image. We, have, we don't have an image. My image is hidden in Christ. Okay. Had, had it not been for Christ, nobody knew him under the J. So if you are tarnishing my image because of Christ, I'm very happy. Do you think pastors love you? A lot of pastors love you. I can't tell. I'm sure some love some. Have you heard some bad or negative comments by other pastors about you? No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet, but I, I'm sure they love me and I love them too. You sure? Oh, yeah. You think there's no bad blood? Between me and other pastors? And other pastors? I'm not too sure. You, you don't know I about it? I don't know. It? Probably, okay. you know, it's very sad to fight someone who, who doesn't know you are fighting him. Mm. You know, it's very sad. And the Bible says, make peace with all men. And the Bible says, when you make peace with your enemies, it's like you pouring coal f uh, fire over their head. So I'm pouring fire in their head. Right. Now, you are a prophet, and yeah. we know that the election is just around the corner. Yeah, Some yeah. prophecies are coming out about the elections. You have decided not to prophesy about elections. Yes. Why? I prophesy about election, but the way I prophesy is different. You understand? I will not pick camera and say that, could you win? I've been out win. But you know who's going to win? Now it's too early. Okay. It's too early to, to, to predict. Talking about the National Cathedral, mm -hmm. what's your take on it? Personally, I, I, I think... <laughs> 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 I, I think it's unnecessary. Why think, do you say that? I, I think we have a lot of challenges than building a National Cathedral. For now, it can be done later on. Because, uh, 
and also I think government should pull off. We can build our church. But this is the same I, thing. I, I, we, can, we can build. We can the build our church. Build, okay. So because again, I, I, come back, I, ca <laughs> I come back to what you said, uh, that we need a beautiful edifice uh, so people can learn from. Yeah. Maybe the government is doing the same thing. Don't you think so? It's a national cathedral. Mm -hmm. I don't need a cathedral. I have built mine. Catholics have built this. Methodists have built this. Now, I, I have not followed to the end, but I, I realize now it's becoming like a tourist attraction. Okay. So it's no longer a cathedral. It's like a business venture. If the government should I invite you building, to be part of the board, will you? Uh, no, I would decline. Oh, you would decline? No, I would decline. I would decline. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not equipped f for now to be on that board. And you have built a big edifice that people think it is worthy of a national cathedral. God gave me an assignment for prayer palace, not for national cathedral. What if the government approaches you for your building? I'll, for what? Your building. The building. The building of God. He wants the me to edifice. build for him or he wants to use my building. To take your building as a national cathedral. I will not give it to him. Why? Because it's, it's for our <laughs> church. <laughs> I didn't use government's money. <laughs> I use the people's money. Maybe they are taking it so they give you money to build another I one. don't need their money. God has provided. And it's, it's enough. Hmm. Uh, we are self-sufficient. If they want to give, they should come sit in the church and give offering. And for that, I will take. What keeps you going? God. And then the people like pastor. Yesterday, I nearly, I nearly uh, shed tears. Why? I, I realize what we've been through, the sacrifices they've made, my board, uh, the leaders, the planning committee for the dedication. I, I sleepless nights. I, 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 I was remembering what the choristers went through. They went through all night for seven solid days just to make sure we had a beautiful day. I'm looking at the protocol, I'm looking at the, my pastors, how committed they are to me. And then I said to God, I'm grateful. And that broke me yesterday. I nearly stopped preaching. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. That's a huge ed edifice. How yeah. do you intend to maintain it? <laughs> the same God that started will complete with us. You know, I depend solely on God. And if God is able to give me this, he will give us the ability to maintain. Don't forget that Africans have very bad uh, culture in maintenance, but we'll change the narrative. I hope so. We'll change the narrative. I want us to enjoy this too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Enjoy this too. Come to pass, see what the Lord has done. Everything we've been waiting for. Whatever God has said concerning our lives, that is what we say. See what the Lord has done, and what we've waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord. Has brought it to pass, so see what the Lord has done. Hey. Yeah, super, super grateful. I'm still in conversation with Prophet Emmanuel J. He has built this latest edifice, he's been trending for the past two weeks and we you know it's actually one week so it's still uh, the trend is still going uh people are talking about him and they are talking and they are talking and they are talking <laughs> we're getting to know more about him prophet emmanuel j you have told us your journey now this question has come up again and again and again the people that have walked out on you if they should come back will you accept them oh yeah why not <clears throat> i'm the father and then as the prodigal son went back to his father and the father run to embrace him i would definitely embrace them but then there are certain opportunities they had they wouldn't have it again because probably uh, they had too many opportunities and that made them misbehave <clears throat> so yes i will accept them but then i will try to spend time with them and groom them well before putting them in certain positions mm. uh, in church okay but you still give them positions 
Of course, when they are qualified, why not? Maybe uh, where we placed him was not where he's supposed to be placed. So he changes his position and I okay. think it will work. Let me ask you this. It's a very sensitive question. And I've had this question come my way so many times. People think that as a pastor, you should have your family with you. Why are they not with you? My family is with me. Okay. Uh -huh. I've not divorced. No, I'm not saying in that. Person. In person. Oh, it depends. It, it doesn't really matter. There's no way in scripture where the Bible says, stay with your wife or your... your uh, you know, You're human. And I'm human. But don't forget that I, I was not living in Ghana. Mm. I was living outside the country before coming to Ghana. Don't you have temptations? Temptation. Yeah, from the young ladies in your church. His grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you want to mess up, you can be with your wife on the same bed and still mess up. Now people mess up even on phone. So it doesn't really matter. It's discipline. And then get your priorities right. There are two things I don't joke with. Mm. One is God. Two is excellence. Mm. So I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And I have beautiful people around me who fire me up. Beautiful people around me like Pastor Uzbempa who is always checking up on me. So yeah, I'm okay. Okay. If you say so. So this is covered from the man himself. He says it's very okay, so don't worry about I'm it. I'm very okay. And don't forget, every month uh, I go to America to see, the, no, Canada to see the family. So I'm okay. And they were with me, I think, for three weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I know people at home want to join the conversation, so I'm going to activate the phone line for you at home to join the conversation. I'm speaking to Prophet Emmanuel J. If you haven't seen the edifice yet, I uh, will project it on the screen for you to see it. What's the seating capacity again? We have, we have about three halls there. We have the first hall that takes 2,500. We have the second hall that takes 300. And there's another hall that we'll, for now we're using for a hall, but later we'll convert into a TV station. Okay. That is about 150 people. Oh, you want to compete us? No, 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 no. The sky is too big to accommodate all beds. <laughs> all right, so you have a TV station yeah, coming up? Yeah, I have a TV station mm. coming up very soon. Okay. And I have a city coming up. Okay. The, 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 the prayer city mm. on 200 acre land. That is also coming up. Do we have timelines to that as well? Uh, it's a secret. Okay. No. But for the TV station, you know, any timelines to the TV you station? No, I don't, I don't disclose what I'm doing until I'm done. So 200 acre land coming up very soon. Watch out. <laughs> okay. We are watching out, but should we look out for this area? It will come up. We are not too soon. sure yet. For now, I, I don't want to disclose. Okay, mm. right. Yeah. Okay. So you are telling us the seating capacity. There's two, two five, five. One is two three five. Hundred. One is three hundred, and there's one fifty. There's one fifty. Yeah, and we have a children's department. Okay. We have a car park that can sit about four fifty cars. We have a beautiful edifice. About one two about three lounges. We have offices for the pastors. We have a boardroom. We have kitchen, oh. and we have a, a huge foyer. And then the washroom is ultra modern. You know, in the washroom, we have a makeup room. Okay. Where you can do your touch up. We have a changing room. For the babies? For the babies. So it, it, it's ultra modern. So, what about your members who don't have anywhere to stay? Even yesterday, we paid some of this rent 6000 something, 6400 Some of this rent. Yesterday, I just paid for some of this I rent. I need a new car. Will you it, buy it, one for me? Are you a, are you a member? <laughs> Must you be a member before you, but you get said any member. benefits? <laughs> but I'm asking you, you know, you fed over no, no. 500 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say I'm hungry and I need a car. But My if, hunger if is I want to get car. to Rosen a car, then I'm looking at $100,000. And at the moment, I don't have $100,000. Okay. So when I get $100,000, I'll buy you a car. All right, on that note, <laughs> let me go on the line. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Hello. Hello, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, please. What's your name? You're calling from Dan Suman, I know. Yes, please. Your name? I'm Gifty. Gifty, talk to us, Gifty. Hello, please can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm fine, please. Yes, please. I'm Gifty. Um, please, when you call, kindly lower the volume of your television set for us, else you get the feedback. Would love to hear your voice this morning, but lower the volume of your television set. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? Hello. Yes, I can hear you perfectly. What's your name, darling? Yeah, my name is Jackie. Talk to I'm us. Calling. Yeah, I'm calling from Atosawa. Okay, talk to us. Yeah, uh, I really see the wonderful thing that uh, the man of God is doing, Prophet Emmanuel. 
it, it, it is really incredible for you to see such amazing auditorium that is just, you know, huge in Ghana. This, this is awesome. I just want to just to lay a prayer on, on my life this morning because I'm blessed with, with what I'm saying and with the way you express yourself, I'm so blessed with it. I mean, these are the men of God we made in Ghana. These are the people who can change our nation for God. All right. Thank you so much. You definitely pray before we end the show, okay? I thank you for calling. Do I have another caller on the line? Hello, good morning. Oh, fortunately, the line dropped. Okay, so Prophet Emmanuel J, sorry. <clears throat> My voice has been worrying me for a while now, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'll, get, I'll get there. I'll get better. So, what are your plans after this, you know, building? I know you've told us about the 200-acre land. You've told us about, do you have a school coming up? Somebody said yeah. there's a school coming there's up school coming up. Uh, we are starting a Bible school. I have okay. an accreditation from, <clears throat> from Florida. Okay. Logos University. All right. So you're starting a Bible school. A Bible school. And we're also starting a Montessori. Should we expect you to be a bishop anytime soon? Who's a bishop? A bishop is a Greek word. That means a leader. I'm already a bishop. Okay. All right. A bishop means a leader. So any leader can be called a bishop. So are you going to call yourself bishop? I'm okay with Prophet Emmanuel J. So we shouldn't expect your name titles. being changed to bishop. I have prophet. Bishop. I have doctor. I have to. There's too many titles. All right. You can call me brother. Okay. All right. So we shouldn't expect the name Bishop. I can't promise you. <laughs> I can't promise you. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm already a bishop. Okay. I'm already a bishop because I'm a leader. A leader means a bishop. So I'm okay with it. How do you identify a true prophet? How can I tell that you are a true prophet? No, there are four things you have to know when you want to identify a true prophet. Deuteronomy 18, 18. It said, and I shall <coughs> pick up a prophet among his brethren and I shall put my word in his mouth and he shall say what I have commanded him to say. Four things here. Number one, I. Mm -hmm. It is God himself that chooses a prophet, not man. So prophets are born. But how do I know you are? How do I know? How prophets do I are born. know you are? How, oh, me. Yeah, exactly. I'm born a prophet. You don't have to know. I'm born. I'm telling you I'm born a prophet. Number two, the second... <clears throat> Everybody will tell me they are born a prophet. Yeah, but when, I, when, I, when I'm done with the four, you will know. When I'm done with Unfortunately, the four. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time. I have just a minute to go. Okay, so the second is humility. The third is a man that carries the word. And the fourth one is somebody who doesn't always say, I want to prophesy. Okay. So four things. All right. So if the person is proud, a prophet can't be proud. All prophets are humble. Okay, thank you so much for being here today. We are super, super grateful. Your final words before you leave? Yes, I was expecting that one. <laughs> 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 All right, but I, the, the, what I'll say is that Ghanaians, uh, we, are, we are a bit funny. When a man of God takes forever to build a temple, we complain. When he builds the temple anyhow, we complain. When he built a good temple, we still complain. Ladies and gentlemen, God deserves the best. And this is what we must give him. If you want to contact me, my name is 0552 And also, Prayer Palace on the Spinters right at just saying, right on the Manor Junction. Every Wednesday morning, we have service, 9 o'clock. Every Friday, we have service, 6 p.m. And every Sunday, two services, 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Someone said you don't take one one CD. Is it true? Who said that? It's on social media. How would I know you are bringing one CD? <laughs> on Thank you so much for being here. His name is Prophet Emmanuel Eje. You can visit his church. That's Prayer Palace on the Spinter's Road. Thank you so much for watching Prime Morning this morning. We wish the members of Prayer Palace nothing but the best. And of course, if you want to join as well, he says it's open. The doors are open for you to join and be a member because they are there to support you. My name is Rosalind Feli. I haven't been doing this alone. I've been doing this with a man himself, KMJ on air. We'll be back again tomorrow from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.